How about if we take a look at a, a couple of quick 10-minute segments involving quotients or division with radicals? So first of all, if you have a division problem, and I'm going to, I'm going to show these in two ways again. If you have two radicals that you want to divide one another uh, by, the quotient rule for radicals says that you can do the division and then simplify. So what I mean by this is put them under a single radical and take 20 and divide it by 5 because it is an integer. That's, that's one of the reasons. And it's not only an integer, it's a perfect square. The square root of 4 is equal to 2. So this is so much easier to treat it this way than my only other option really is to get out a calculator. And I'm wishing for you to gain these skills and to not use a calculator to simplify radicals. Um, so I really needed to do this division to find out what the square root of is. So here's another one, just like it. So the square root of 65 divided by the square root of 13. And the directions would say divide and simplify. So it's, it's um, provoking you to check and see if 13 goes into 65 evenly. I believe it goes in there five times. So you have then the square root of 5. If this number can't be factored into pairs of primes, in this case it already is a prime number, it can't be simplified. It's also not in this list. It's not a perfect square. So I'm all done. This is the exact answer. And that's what I want to leave. I don't want to get my calculator out and find out what the square root of 5 is and find that it's 2.73 or something like that. So I want to leave it like that. Um, and then finally, if um, the denominator is larger than the numerator, then at least think of it as a fraction and try to simplify that fraction. For example, we know that 3 goes into the numerator once, and it goes into this denominator 16 times. So what you have here is the square root of 1 over 16. And this is a little bit of an exaggeration. You don't need to really write this down. But I want you to know that you can break these back apart. It is the quotient rule for radicals. And you can look at that and say, well, I know that the square root of 1 is 1. And I know that the square root of 16 is 4, and I can simplify that expression into this, this rational number, 1 fourth. So simplify first, if it's going to be a fraction, and then go ahead and uh, simplify the radical expression itself. So let's say I had 48x cubed in the numerator and 3x in the denominator. Again, please think of it like that, and remind yourself that numeric, the numerical factors, I can reduce those fractions by dividing 3 into here once and into here 16 times, but please remember these bases are alike, so you subtract their exponents, so a 3 minus a 1 gives you a 2, and that, that value will be in the numerator, so what you really have here is just the square root of 16x squared, because this is a 1 and this x um, divided into x cubed x squared times. My answer then is 4x because I can reduce that last piece. Uh, let's see, let's look at sometimes um, they're given to you underneath a single radical. Everything I've been given to you so far has been a, a radical symbol in the numerator and in the denominator. So again, I'm just asking you to say, geez, I recognize that 64. You know, the square root of 64 is, is 8. And I recognize, no, yeah, I don't recognize that 289. I might take my calculator and check it and see if it might be an integer. And it is. If you take the square root of 289, you get 17. So in the numerator, I have an 8. And in the denominator, I have a 17. That's what I'm looking for in terms of simplifying it. I'm not looking for a decimal value that you got from your calculator. Uh, Another one. Again, a, a whole, um, the radicand is a fraction. So here's 9a squared over 625. So all of these are perfect squares. Uh, that one you may not recognize, but because that one's a perfect square and that one's a perfect square, because you know the square root of 9 is 3, and you know the square root of a squared is a, then maybe you should just get your calculator out and just kind of find out if by chance that's a perfect square, and I, it is. It's equal to 25. So in the numerator, I have a 3 times an a, 
In the denominator, I have a 25. The 3 and the 25 cannot be reduced, and so I'm all done. Uh, let's see, one more. And then we'll look at what's called um, rationalizing the denominator. So this last one... And I've just written this as a quotient, and so I can put it under a single radical, because I know 5 will go into 125, 25 times, that's kind of nice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it under one radical, so we can kind of see it more clearly. So, again, uh, 5 goes into here once, and into here 25 times. These Q's have like bases. Their exponents can be subtracted. If you're comfortable with taking 3 and subtracting 19 and getting a negative 16, that's fine. That would be q to the negative 16 in the numerator. We don't like negative exponents. We would have to move it into the denominator. But look, if you would just subtract, take 19 and subtract 3, subtract in that order, you'd get q to the 16th, and you'd recognize that that is in the denominator. q to the 16th is in the denominator, and finally the square root of 5 is 5. The square root of q to the 16th is q to the 8th because I divide that 16 by 2 and I can check it because q to the 8th times q to the 8th is q to the 16th. I'm going to pause now and get ready to look at what's called rationalizing the denominator with radicals. It's, I kind of joke that it's a topic where you don't want to have radicals in your basement. You know, think of your house. No radicals. I don't like spiders and all kinds of garbage in my, in my basement in my house. Well, we don't like radicals in our denominators, and so we're going to learn how to get rid of those by rationalizing the denominator next.